Hello everyone. Today we are on the fourth series of our discussion about the trip to Amsterdam and the new technology that we updated ourselves on. Today's discussion is very interesting and it is on green IVF. So let's see what is green IVF. So this is myself at Amsterdam and this is an annual meeting every year. We have it in Europe, sometimes in the US by the ASRM. And this talk is by Christina Ritchie and she is going to speak on environmental ethics and medical reproduction. Christina Ricci is a lecturer of ethics at the University of Edinburgh. She's written a book on this topic and is well known for her ethical management of healthcare. She has, along with her colleagues, promoted green IVF. The European environment policy is central to combating climate change in Europe and medical reproduction carbon can be reduced by life cycle assessment of the procedure and components. What is green IVF? Green IVF refers to a more environmentally friendly and patient-centered approach to IVF focusing on reducing unnecessary interventions, medications, and resource use without compromising the effectiveness of the treatment. We all know that there is a carbon footprint that everyone generates the, amongst the developed and developing nations. The highest is in the United States and Canada and uh, India, though is developing, does not have as much carbon footprint, but is expected to generate more because of increased developmental activities. A carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gas, primarily carbon dioxide, that are released into the atmosphere as a result of human activities like transportation, manufacturing, deforestation. The impact of the carbon footprint can lead to global warming, which can lead to climate change, melting of glaciers, changing of sea levels, health issues like respiratory diseases, economic costs like increased energy cost, biodiversity loss like loss of species and threat to water resources. In IVF, what are the sources of carbon footprint? This can start from laboratory equipment and consumables, like incubators, centrifuges, disposable consumables like pipettes, culture media, medication and hormone packaging can lead to contribute to greenhouse gas emission, Production is associated with environmental costs. The energy usage in the lab for the HVAC system, humidity control, air control, continuous lighting, computers used, waste disposal like uh, syringes, needles, they need incineration, special treatment. Non-biodegradable plastic waste can lead to packaging and environmental impact. Patient transportations like, you know, monitoring your daily commutes of patient and staff can lead to the burden of carbon emission. Long-term storage requires high energy freezers or liquid nitrogen. Cryopreservation techniques demand continuous energy. The procedures per se require sterile environments, energy intensive operating theaters. So everything, actually everything that we do, not only in IVF, any other field, 
is energy intensive and uses and leads to carbon footprint. In IVF, we have seen it is there in most of the systems. Now, how can we make it more green? One, minimizing medication and hormone stimulation. Two, reducing resource and energy used by streamlining lab processes and avoiding unnecessary interventions like ICSI, PGTA, and add-ons that have not been proven. So does green IVF mean you are reducing the options? No, green IVF does not necessarily mean reducing IVF options or compromising the treatment. Instead, it focuses on optimizing processes and minimizing wasteful or unnecessary interventions without affecting the effectiveness or success of IVF. So how can we promote? We reduce PGTA, reduce unnecessary stimulation. Do we also reduce the age of pa uh, the patient where we offer IVF? No. Science is here to offer options to our patients suffering from fertility. Green IVF should not mean snatching away these options, be it age or technology. In fact, it should further empower our patients and the world in general by being more responsible. I was asked, you know, how many people do IVF and what is really the carbon footprint? Is it really a topic of debate or discussion? The answer again is yes. It is not just IVF. It could be any manufacturing. It could be healthcare industry. Reducing, optimizing energy conservation is everyone's responsibilities. Reducing wastage, doing unnecessary treatment is everyone's responsibility. And so is green IVF. So thank you so much for sharing your time with me. And I hope this was a little bit of a brain rattler. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thank you so much. Bye.